Life of Fred, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. It is not for everyone, but we love it. Let me tell you a little bit why we have used this as a full curriculum. Is it a full curriculum? Most people would say no. We have used it as such. Let me get it. This is not your typical traditional math curriculum in any way. This is a story. It has a narrative line that goes along with it and it's pretty goofy. Your kids are gonna love it. You'll think it's like blippy weird, but it works. And that is a large part of a life of Fred is trusting the process because you will often say, is this enough? I'm not sure. I decided, yeah, I think it is. And we have now completed my um, going into fifth grade, no, going into sixth grade, yeah, going into fifth grade son, um, completed all of the elementary series when he was at the beginning of fourth grade. And I actually slid him right into Apologia 5 when he was in fourth grade. And that worked really well. So have courage that you can do these from kindergarten through fourth grade and slide right into Apologia level five. That was so cool for me to see and to finally get to experience that. Now, did we have to switch? Did we have to leave Life of Fred and go to Apologia? No, we didn't because Life of Fred goes all the way on, all the way through college level classes actually. But the next ones um, are these three. And my son actually, he did do two of them, but I decided it was getting too advanced for him and that I wanted him to slow down and have time um, to practice some things. I thought maybe doing like a standard, more traditional curriculum would be good practice for him. And I wanted to see how he would do with that. So we put it on pause, went to do this other thing uh, with Apologia, and it's, it's working really well. He wants to go back to Life of Fred eventually, but right now we're sticking with it. I just want him to have some time. And, and that will happen when you're going through these as well. So let me explain a little bit more. There are this whole set, it's A through J, it's done alphabetical. So uh, apples, butterflies, cats, dogs, goldfish. I'm doing this without looking, Edgewood, farming, jelly beans and ice cream. Yeah, did I get that all right? Honey, ice cream, and jelly beans. So you're gonna start off, and yes, you can start off when your child is like five years old and read the book one, Apples. And then when you're done with it, there's like 18 to 19 chapters per book. When you're done with it, you just move on to the next one, Cats, and then you move on to Dogs. And I would say about three to four a school year which if you do the math in there, let's say 20, cause that's easier math, 20, 40, 60 is three. That's really all you have to do a year. Um, but then 80, like that's not enough school days for a year. <laughs> so you have a lot of extra time. You can be using extra workbooks if you want to. I know a lot of parents use these as just like bedtime stories. They don't use them as a full curriculum um, and they just use the, them as supplemental things. I have occasionally gone to Dollar Tree and gotten Dollar Tree workbooks and had my kids do some of those in that gap time. I really took a more unschooling approach, I mean, other than Life of Fred, with math for my kids. I love doing things around the house. I love game schooling. You'll find videos on my channel about game schooling. Um, I do a workshop about game schooling. I love doing math in multiple ways so that my kids don't hate it, so that they aren't afraid of it, because I don't think math is something to be afraid of. I think it's beautiful. Let's keep focusing here, but later on, if you want, you can go check out my videos on Generations versus Apologia math also, where I do talk about like God's involvement in math. There is not God involved. Um, the, the author is a Christian here, but I can't like really think of a time that it really pulled that in. I know Fred goes to Sunday school in some of the other books, um, but I don't think there's much like, th there's no faith based from this in these books at least. Um, 
at this point. These books are really like an unschooling approach as well, or maybe you would even think if you like that method um, of them as being like a unit study or fully covering lots of topics. If you like going on bunny trails, you can do that with your kids because in these books, you aren't just talking about math. You're talking about Archimedes, uh, the father of math. You're going to talk about deciduous and conifer trees. You're going to talk about herbivores and carnivores and obligate carnivores. These books really expect that your kids can handle it, um, that they can take this information and that they'll be able to sort it all out. And they're giving your kids a a nice vocabulary. We're talking about negative numbers in book one. I have not seen another math that introduces negative numbers to kids. And yet we live in Minnesota where we have negative numbers at least a month or two or three out of the year. And so negative numbers are a thing, but we don't teach our kids that in other math curriculums, but in Life of Fred, they do. So Fred is a five-year-old math professor. He's a genius and he lives in Kansas and he lives at a college in his office. He has a little stuffed doll named Kingy and it's his best friend and he talks to Kingy and they have this really cute little relationship. Fred is also five years old and so he's very naive and very young in a lot of the situations that are happening around him as well. When he goes to the bank or when he goes to the gym or when he goes to some of these other things, there are people in the world that will take advantage of young children that don't have full understandings of what's going on. And so he gets ripped off in different situations. Um, he always thinks the best of a situation and sometimes that gets taken advantage of. And so there are sometimes like sad moments that are happening or um, things that like your kids might, uh, if you have sensitive children, they might be like, oh, that wasn't nice. Like, CZ Colback, I hate you. Um, because that character keeps coming back and is a meanie. Uh, but I think these things are really interesting and good for our kids too, that we're reading about them because we get to talk about them then as well. So I actually really like the things that are introduced here. Now, Life of Fred also, like I said, is introducing a lot of concepts. So you're going to be talking about set theory, which when I talked with the author of the Apology on Math, I asked her, like, do you cover set theory? Like, why is this in Life of Fred? And she's like, I, I don't know if you know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not sure that's the correct term. Um, and then I explained it and I showed her some pictures and she's like, that's like college level. Like, why is that in there? And like, Sigma is in there before the end of your elementary series and calculus things and and things that I don't fully understand. But what I love about this is that it is all life applicable. When Fred is bringing this in, I mean, we're talking about multiplication kind of early on too, because he's making eggs on a stove and he has like two eggs in each pan on four different burners. And so how many eggs is that? Like really early on, but your kids are standing at the stove. Like they see you doing that. These are just simple ways that you can be introducing math to your kids as well. And so it's like, this is just showing you how to do that. There's algebra that's introduced early on because um, he's just do, being like, hey, don't be afraid of this. If you see two y plus three y equals what, like, don't be afraid of that. Just add the y on there. <laughs> and I don't, it's, I can't explain it all because I'm not a math genius, but it takes away a lot of the fear of some of those things that are coming up later on uh, because it's introduced it to your kids. So let me show you a little bit more. I think I've been showing you probably some B-roll and things that are in there, but specifically, I wanna show you what you can expect. You're just reading a couple of pages every day. And then at the very end, there's this your turn to play. It's usually, five to six questions. And these are questions that for the most part, I was verbally asking my kids and then they would give me the response um, orally. And yeah, so right here on page 41, it's three X plus four X equals what? Let's do some algebra right here. 
on chapter five in book one. And so then you have seven X is the answer. Uh, we're practicing days of the week, months of the year are all in here too. So when you turn over the page, you see the answers right there on the back. They're silly. There's really silly art in here and drawings. I think it's really unique and fun, even though it's not colorful, which I kind of like. I like the simplicity of it not being super colorful. I think that's really neat. Um, when you get later on in book three, and while I was trying to find this example, I also noticed that in this book, you're talking about constellations and you're talking about alphabetizing. So like I said, it's covering a lot of subjects actually in this book as well. But right here, now it's giving your child after those like your turn to play, it's now giving a row of practice. So you're supposed to put a piece of paper there and then just answer the question, um, write it on the piece of paper. And then after you've answered them all, move the paper to check to see what the answers are. So this is in book three, Cats. Um, and so now they're doing a little bit more with like writing those problems like you would um, in another math book. And it recommends also keeping a separate notebook to be answering these questions in too. I had my son start keeping a separate notebook uh, more towards the end, maybe just the last two of the elementary series, because at that point he was reading the stories by himself. And so once he got to reading the stories by himself, I wanted him to answer them in the notebook and then bring them to me and I would check, the, turn the page and check the answers um, at that point. But up until like the last two books in the elementary series, I was reading these. I read them with him and then I read them with my twins. Um, the twins got to, I don't know, book three or four, and then they read some by themselves and then they stopped and went to apology as well because they were getting so far along in these that we, I wanted to slow it down because I don't think there's a rush. I just don't think there's a rush to be pushing on just because we can. Um, I want them to enjoy it. So, and then I will read these to my youngest one as well, even though he could uh, probably read some of them also. There's a big sense of like family culture with these books for me and the boys uh, because my oldest has gone through it. I, he actually, I think my for my youngest one did start with this one before we started him in Generations Math. Um, my oldest son was reading some of the stories to him and I had read some of them to my five-year-old as well. But it was really fun hearing my older son reread these and sometimes he'll hear his twins reading them and be like, oh, I know what's gonna happen. You're gonna hate what happens next. Or, oh, that one's really funny how that one ends. And so it's, it's really cute. <laughs> and I do consider these to be a family style math curriculum. So I give Life of Fred a lot of credit for my boys' success with math. They all score really well at the end of the year in their math. Um, and I think it is because the way that it has been explained and it just applicable, this is wordy math. It explains to your kids why they need to know something. It sounds like just a story, but it's actually like applicable. It makes sense. Mom, why do I need to know this? No, there's no questions with that. We've actually never had tears with Fred before because they're eager to hear the next story. They're willing to do just a couple questions at the end and then move on. And so this has worked out as a great curriculum for us. Yes, we've taken a break. We are using something else right now because I'm a curriculum junkie because we wanted to see what other things were like and if we were missing anything. And there are good things in those maths as well. And you can see a review of some of those here. And then if you're interested in what we are currently using in other subjects, you can go ahead and click there too. Thanks so much for watching this, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll see you again soon.